So You Can Play That Game is proudly sponsored by NiceGameShop.com, the place to go for rare and unusual Asian games. Hi, I'm Michael. Take a seat and I'll tell you about Whistle Stop by Bezier Games, a game of rival railroad companies who are trying to compete in pioneer USA, building the railroads from the East Coast to the West Coast. And whoever has the most fame at the end of that is going to be the winner. So fame is your victory points and you'll gain that during the game through pickup and delivery. You see, there are towns along the way which have been built and you're connecting to with the railroads but they want goods. Some stops you'll be able to pick up goods and then you can deliver those goods to the towns in order to gain points. As well as gaining points when you do this, you'll gain shares in the railroads and these will give you points at the end of the game. Whoever has the most shares in a railroad, which is determined by the colour of share, will get the points. Only one person will get the points and ties are broken by whoever has the lowest number share. So getting to these shares first is a big deal. You'll also then get points when you reach the west coast. And these are kind of end stops. As well as being sort of like towns but they don't give you shares, they give you a bunch of points and you get to remove your train and place it on one of these spaces here that then gives you more stuff. Now that stuff will be goods and resources for completing that kind of pickup and delivery aspect, but it's also your means of movement, your fuel. And there are two types of fuel in this, and they're what's going to allow you to move your trains from that east coast to the west coast. And that's coal and whistles. Now coal is this basic kind of fuel that will allow you to move one space in the direction towards the west coast, and that's it, or up and down in the column that you're in. Whereas a whistle is like super fuel. You can move two spaces and you can jump over an opposing player and you can move backwards if you want. So it's like super powerful. Now, each round in this game, each player is going to get two fuel. But you can get fuel through special stops. And there are also special stops that are like stores that will give you stuff. Gold mine where you can pick up gold, which is another way to get points in the game. Or trading post where you can like exchange goods. And most important, the coal yard where you can get even more coal because you're always going to need coal in this. Another thing you're going to use that coal for is you can use your resources to buy upgrades. These are like special powers. And a really good thing about these special powers is you only use two more than the number of players, but it comes with a big stack, which means the varying players, the varying powers, give a great amount of replay value because each game might play differently. You know, if you've got the mine cart, you might end up with a load of mine. If you've got the coal car, then you're there going, oh, I've got coal, but you get a lot of competition of people trying to take it. So there's so much good going on in this game. And that's what this game comes down to. And then at the end of the game, you've got points as you're going along, you'll get points for those shares. And it's just who has the most. Now, one thing I haven't talked about yet is a big part of this game, and that's the tile placement. You see, most of the board is going to be empty when you start. You're going to have a line in the middle, which is the Intercontinental Railroad, so you've got kind of an idea of what's going on and where to head for kind of halfway through the game, and your end places are populated. But then, as you move around, when you move into empty space, you pick what's going to be there by your tile placement. Now, a good thing about this is you're going to have free in hand, so you're going to have choice, but also, when you're refilling your hand back up to free, you're going to have choice. You can, there's free available face up, so you always know, well, I can go for a sure thing, or you can take a chance. So it's a nice way of balancing the luck in this game with the strategy. And that's one thing this game does really well, is balancing luck and strategy, because there's a lot of random elements, really, but it comes down to random setup. It doesn't make it feel any less strategic. So you've got the randomness there that allows for great replay value, or I should say maybe variation, because it's not really, 
doesn't really feel random. You've got random set up with what's in the middle, where it's going to be, where the end points are going to be, what the end points are going to be, because the end points, again, like with these, you've got more than you use in each game, so it's going to vary. You're not always going to have the same options available, so you're not always going to be able to play in exactly the same way. But every time you are playing, you're going to be making those strategic decisions all the way along. But then that's also what's going to be a downside for many people playing this. Because when you first play, you don't really know the strategies involved. You don't know the tactics. You don't really know what's good to go for, how best to do things. Which means the first games of this can really put people off because it is a learning game. That first game is a learning game, and it's also it's a learning game where people are like, but, uh, oh, there's so much going on, there's so much to look at, I don't know what to do, I don't know where to go. Especially because in the setup, you've got to choose where you're placing your train, and that is going to have a huge impact on the rest of the game. So that can be very, very daunting for new players. But if you're able to play the game to get past that, have a game or two learning, pick up some of the techniques like the race to the end or the building up stocks, you know, building up those towns in your hand and being able to go, aha, I get that because no one else has even been able to get that stock yet. Those little kind of tactics and that really help make this game. This is a game that balances well for the number of players as well, which is a really good thing because it plays two to five players and it plays two to five players. The game feels like the same game. The fact that the board size stays the same doesn't really matter. You've got more trains, so you're doing more with fewer players, but you've still got that kind of crowded feel. The, the biggest difference is probably between two and three players because you're using the same number of trains, so it's much more crowded. For a free player game, for example, you would not end up at the end of the game likely to have any empty spaces. Whereas in a two player game, that's quite common to not have the board completely filled. But it scales well up to the five player. I mean, and once people are used to playing this, you can play a game in about an hour, two players, five players, because you reduce the number of rounds and the number of trains, which reduces the number of options, which makes people's turns quicker because there's less for them to consider. Then it goes much quicker as well. So you're, you're talking maybe an hour for a two player game when people are used to it. Those first couple of games are going to take longer with this. That's just the way it is. But then a five player game, once people are used to it, you're still going to be able to play in probably about two hours. I would say from my experience, two hours. So I think that's really good for a five player game that isn't just a light party game. It gives you strategy, it's really engaging, it's really interesting, it plays different every time. The one thing is this isn't going to appeal to everyone, partly because the theme, Trains, is not going to appeal to everyone, partly because of the way the gameplay is. There's very little, I would say, exciting randomness. So if you want the excitement of rolling the dice and fate deciding what's going to happen, this isn't going to be a game for you. Your decisions are what's going to make or break this game. You are going to do well or badly, largely based on your decisions. Now, there is going to be some luck of the draw with the tiles, but that's not going to make or break the game, really, and decide who wins. So, yeah, I mean, accessibility is definitely an issue for this, but otherwise, I think it is a lovely fun game with so many different elements, so much going on, but in an easy to play way and an easy to teach way as well. So that's my thoughts on Whistle Stop by Bezier Games. I do hope you've enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you have, please do check out the rest of the videos on the channel as well as subscribing, sharing and liking. And as always, thanks for watching and bye for now.